Boom. As far as writing on these, so we all know that this starts P and ends Q. If the next thing is a Q, this is not valid. As soon as you start with a Q, you know that's not valid. So option four is the same thing. Student gets an A on a final exam, that's P, then they'll pass the test, that's Q, or the course, that's Q. They pass the course, that starts Q. Lots of people tempted to say this is true. I don't care whether it's true or not, this is not a valid pattern. I cannot start with a Q, okay? So after you eliminate A and D, you gotta look at B and C. And so if I've got a good book, that's P. You enjoy yourself, that's Q. I've got a good book, that's P again. I cannot have two hypotheses that are the same and use syllogism. So B can't be the answer either. It's gotta be C. Canis Rufus, then it's endangered. Then it's a red wolf, that's new. Then it's Canis Rufus, that's P. I've got a hypothesis and a conclusion that I can cancel out. And then my red wolf is my hypothesis and endangered is the conclusion and that works out, okay? We're gonna keep seeing those until we get good at them. What was the first angle you found here, ladies and gentlemen? What was the first angle that you found? Angle one, yeah, that's the first one I would find too. So whether you do 180 minus 90, remember that little angle box means it's a 90 degrees minus 43 equals 47 question mark. Or whether you know this is 90 degrees, so these two have to equal 90 either way. And then we've got this linear pair, which has to equal 180. So what was the answer to number two? 137, fantastic. And then we've got our last triangle, and I want to say that was 31. Sweet. Okay, getting so good at those. Distance formula, dun, dun, dun. Negative 10, positive 4. Negative 10, positive 4. I encourage you to plot that. And then negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, negative 1. The first mistake that sometimes is made is that doesn't end up in the third quadrant for whatever reason. You can draw your triangle if you are a visual learner, right? So I went down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That side of the triangle is 5. And then I went right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm not gonna write this as a slope because I'm looking for a length, but what I can do is Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The two legs squared equals the third side. So five squared plus seven squared equals C squared. If you very much like algebra and you would prefer to do the distance formula, I totally get it. It's not my jam usually, but I do understand that's what other students like to do, people like to do. So negative 10 minus negative 3. When you do minus a negative, that turns into a super plus, right? So negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. When you square negative 7, you get the same thing as when you square positive 7. And then I've got 4 and negative 1. So plus four minus negative one. Again, when we've got that minus a negative, we make that into a super plus. So four plus one is five. And five squared is the same thing that I got over here. All you're doing when you subtract those y's is finding the height of that triangle. All you're doing when you subtract the x's is finding the widths of that triangle, okay? So when we square them and then take the square root, I think we get the square root of 74. Did anybody find the square root of 74? 8.6. Oops, I don't know why I put my six first. 8.6. Okay. So whether you use Pythagorean theorem or distance formula, beware of those integers, right? I make all kinds of integer mistakes myself. That's why I prefer the visual. I don't have the answer choices here, but what's the first thing you need to do? Find F, what is F? Is it 90 degrees? 
It makes me so mad when pictures are not drawn right. So this should be a right angle. It is definitely not drawn as a right angle. You gotta live with that or redraw the triangle. So if I'm ordering them from longest to shortest, the most common mistake people make is they put them backwards. They don't read that longest first. If F is the biggest angle, then opposite that DE is the longest side. DE is definitely longest. What's medium? EF, absolutely. EF is the medium, which means that DF is the small. I feel like my handwriting gets worse every day. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Last one. What's the relationship here, ladies and gentlemen? Everybody all at once. Same side interior. I love it. Was the best chorus I've had yet today. So if I've got same side interior, what do I do with those expressions? Add them or set them equal? Add them. Say it with gusto. Add them, right? I've got one obtuse angle up here and one acute angle down here. They are different, my friends. So same side supplementary. Same side supplementary. Add those up. So x plus 109 plus x plus 89 equals 180. When you solve that, I think you get x equals negative 9. That should cause you some pause. Okay, you're in geometry. We're talking about real things. We're talking about real angles, real distances. x equals negative 9 should make you pause a little bit. When you substitute that negative 9 in, this angle is 100 degrees. And when you substitute it in here, that angle is 80 degrees. 80 plus 100 equals 180. So we know we've done it correctly. Okay, so even though you get a negative x, you've got positive angles, and that's okay. But it should cause you to question your answer just for a moment. Just like in the last question when we got 90 degrees and the picture did not look like a 90 degree angle, that should cause you a moment of, hey, did I do that right? And of course you did. It's just a matter of making sure, okay? Let's, before we do anything else, come out here. So grades, the semester closes on the Wednesday after we come back from spring break. Grades for this term, second quarter, need to be completed by Friday for me, okay? So I just updated the grade book. I looked at everybody's FIXLs everybody's learning targets for unit four and the test for unit four. The only things that are still open that will go on the second quarter grade are these retakes. If your grade is not where you want it to be right now, these retakes are your last and final hope, okay? The F like Frank IXLs that went with unit four will also help. So the F IXLs for unit four and these three retakes or what is going to go in the grade book. Okay. I will send out emails and progress reports today, just so you know. All right. That's my little public service announcement. Um, we're going to go into, because we did start on this yesterday, which is fantastic. It'll give us a little wiggle room today. So if you join me in unit five, six, because that's where we are. You've already started your IXLs, right? The J's, hopefully those all went well and you did some more of those last night. We just did the warm up in this corresponding parts. There is another link underneath that we're gonna talk about now. So there's a Pear Deck if you would like the Pear Deck. There's Google Slides if you would like the Google Slides. I'm gonna put the Pear Deck link in the chat. We've already started these a little bit. If I can get the chat to open up. There you go, chat. If you would rather have the Google Slides, you are welcome to open those. And if you would rather just write it on paper and go old school, that's cool too. Okay. But this is where we're going to start. We've already talked about these first two things. We know that we mark sides with tick marks. If they all have the same number of tick marks, then they are congruent. If they don't have the same number of tick marks, they are not congruent, okay? We label angles with loops. 
So if the number of loops are the same number of loops, then they are congruent. Hopefully everybody's done enough IXL to know that one loop angles are congruent and two loop angles are congruent and three loop angles are congruent, right? Talked about that yesterday. So let's take a minute and do some of these. I'm not gonna do all of them. I don't think we need to, but also in IXL, this key up here was important. And in IXL, we started with you writing the key, but a lot of times it's given to you. And this key is gonna be more useful than the pictures a lot of times because the pictures can rotate around in space and you don't know whether they've been rotated or whether they've been reflected. So this key is always gonna be how you wanna find which sides go with each other. So if I'm asking you TU, TU is the last two letters. So TU, this, thing, this side here, goes with the last two letters, LM. LM and TU go together. You might not choose those if you were just looking at the picture. You always want to look at this key. I cannot say that enough. So TU, middle and last, goes with LM. The order is going to matter. If you put ML instead of LM, it might get counted wrong. Okay? The order matters 100%. So what goes with KM? KM goes with SU. SU. So it's the first letter and the last letter and the first letter and the last letter. Absolutely. S U. If you're on the Pear Deck, I encourage you to write with me. If you're not in the Pear Deck, write it on your own paper. But do something so this is going to sink into your mind, right? You need some kind of physical connection with the material. Don't just sit and passively watch. I am not a Netflix channel. Okay, you can't binge watch me. LK. LK is the middle letter and the first letter. So that goes with TS. Absolutely. TS. We can do the same thing with angles, right? So angle M goes with angle U. And angle T goes with angle L. What is the difference between F and G? What am I asking for in F? What's that little symbol mean right there? angle. This one is talking about the angle. And remember, we're talking about that middle angle is the vertex, right? So angle U is opposite the one tick mark. So it goes with angle K. It's opposite the one tick mark. Angle S is the first letter. Angle K is the first letter, right? Here, what does this symbol mean? If this means angle, this means triangle. So here I'm talking about the entire triangle. It seems like a little thing, but it is going to become important. So triangle S or UST is also known as triangle K. If we wanted to label it with all three letters, we would go UST is last, first, middle. So we would go MKL. MKL last, first, middle. You see how that key becomes really important? Okay. Um, what about over here? If I'm asking for missing measures, how long is CM? How long is CM? What does CM go with? CM goes with YR, so I 100% agree that's 11. Okay, the difference in the question here is what's the measure? So I don't want the letters, I want the actual length. What about BM? What does BM go with? BM definitely goes with that 15. That one is an easy visual. So then what's the last one? What about the angles? Angle B goes with what? Angle B goes with angle Z, so that's 100% 45. What about angle M? M goes with R. So R goes with you. How do you know it's 45? It's a good guess. Are they isosceles? 
It kind of looks like it's isosceles, but we know this is 11 and 8 and 15. So I think that might be scalene. So how can I figure out angle M? What do we just figure out here? If I know B is 45, I know M goes with R, but I don't know R either. But I know 45 and 103, how can I find M? Add them up and subtract them. So when you add up 103 and 45, you get 148. If you take away 148 from 180, what do you get? Mm -hmm. 180 minus 148 is? 32. Awesome. 32 degrees. Sometimes you're going to have to do triangle sum. It's going to be a multi-step process. In this unit, you're going to pull together everything that you've learned so far. It's tough. Okay, it's going to take a minute to wrap your heads around it. So then an easy one, Y and C are both the middle angle. So Y equals C. So what do I write in here? 103. Okay, let's look down at the bottom. What can I fill in here? We don't have to go in order. Just when you think you've got something, you tell me what I can fill in over here. So AP goes with LX, so this should be 13, and they are isosceles. This time it's marked, so XN is also 13, right? And if XN is 13, that's the last two letters, that means PC is also 13. So PC is 13. So what about AC? So AC goes with LN, and LN is 21, so AC has to be 21. Notice that I put one tick mark for the 13s and two tick marks for the 21. Okay. What about the side, or what about the angles over here, L, C, and X? If I know angle A is 29, what other angles are 29? N, what else? L, because this is an isosceles triangle, these two base angles are congruent. So L is 29. What else is 29? Board. Oh, hello, board. Thank you. It's like squirrel. Just kidding. Is C also 29? So I've got base angles here, N and L are both 29, and C and A are also 29. Yes, 100%. So how can I find X? I want to know X. Add them together and subtract. So 29 plus 29 is 58, and 180 minus 58 is? One twenty two. Awesome, 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 awesome. We're going to kick it up a notch. Eventually, like on your homework, you're going to have to solve some equations. Okay, in the IXL2. If I'm trying to solve for X, right? XS goes with what? XS goes with DF. So this side goes with DF this side. I want to set those two things equal. So 17X plus 3 equals 54. How do I solve that? Subtract 3 and divide. So what's X equal? Because I know everybody's pulled out their calculator and they've done 54 minus 3. Divide by 17 is what, Dalton? 
I got three as well. Okay, so x equals three. Then if we're looking for y, we've got to come over to this side. So xp goes with what number? XP goes with DN, absolutely. So DN. So now I got to set these guys equal to each other. So 4Y minus 3 equals 57. And then everybody who loves algebra is going to solve that equation. Look at he split. 15. Okay. Take a minute, process that commit to always looking at these keys up here. The letters should always be in the right order. So look at number eight and give you about 30 seconds to just process it. Look at it, see where you would attack it. Where would you start? What can you set equal to each other? What can you fill in? If you need to draw it on your own piece of paper, I encourage you to do that. I like it. So M and B go together and T and G go together and W and K, W and K. So what equation can I set up? T equals 45, I see in the chat. And then 4X minus 3 equals 45. So G and T, right? So 4X minus 3 equals 45. So X equals 12. So I want to add three to both sides and then divide by four. So T and G have given me my first answer. How do I find Y? What's B go with? Subtract, subtract what? Absolutely. So if I know that T equals 45 and I know 41 is already given to me, 180 minus 85 is going to give me 94. So, so then 94 equals 11Y plus 6. That's a 94, by the way. So then when I solve that, I want to subtract 6 from both sides and divide by 11. And what is y equal? Eight. Eight. Excellent. Okay. You got to think about these things a little bit. You got to write down everything you know in order to figure out what you can. So let's look at number nine. How, ooh, hello. How would you start number nine? We're going to find X, Y, and Z here. What do we want to start with? X, Y, or Z? Dun, 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 dun. What do we think? What do we want to start with here? What do we know? When in doubt, start with X. I don't know if we can do it, but we can look. So what do we know about PS? Yeah, PS goes with CH. So CO, 
I understand the problem now. This is F and this is H. It got cut off. So CH is 39. So we need to do 2X minus 7 equals 39. We solve that to find X. So if everything's not labeled, you got to figure out how to label it. Angle R goes with angle F. That's how I know this one's got to be here, which means R is also a right angle. So what can I do with the Y expression? What's 13Y minus 1 going to equal? What does angle R go with? Yeah, 90 degrees. That's angle F, 90 degrees. Boom. And then let's get another color. Let's get green. What do I know about Z? What do I know about angle H? It goes with S. Ay, 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 but angle S doesn't have an angle in it. How do I figure that out? I got to do the corners of the triangle, which means I need to know this is 90 degrees, right? So if I know R is 90 degrees, that's a 9, not a 96, by the way. So if I know 90 and 28, what's angle S going to be? 180 minus 90 gives me 90. 90 minus 28, 72, 72 or 62. Are we sure? Is it my mental craziness? 180 minus 90 minus 28, 62. So 62, 6z minus 4 equals 62. Okay? We're going to practice setting up those, those equations a little bit. Okay? Questions on those? Questions, questions, questions. All right. Then we're going to roll through the rest of these, and then I'm going to give you time to, what do I want to do here? 35. Actually, I want to have you guys, we're going to take a pause here for a second, just like we did yesterday. And I want you guys to try to sign into Delta Math for me. So because you've already started the IXL for homework, your homework is going to be this 11 question homework. Some of them are tough. Try to do them before tomorrow, okay? But click on this Delta Math link. I want everybody to sign into Delta Math. Um, and I'm going to put the link in the chat in case you need it. Hopefully this link works. So try to go to Delta Math. You're going to sign in with your username. And when it's asked you for a teacher code, put in that teacher code. Mm, you might need to make an account. So you might need to just make whatever account, like maybe create an account over here. And if you already have an account from like another math teacher, you need to make sure that you put in that teacher code that I gave you. So you might need to go to create an account. The school doesn't like push your account information so you can make it whatever you want. And then put in my teacher code that's right here. Would it be helpful if I stopped sharing? Or can you minimize the zoom so that you have full control of your computer? And then third block, if it's an option, or B3. Let me know if the link is working or not working. You can put it in the chat or just shout out. Yeah, can you create an account? 
it just sits there, huh? Hmm. I wonder what I'm doing wrong because I'm sure it's on my end. Anybody able to make it work? You're in, Brian? Yeah. Oh, okay, so it is working. Can you see assignments in there? Okay. If you click on that first assignment, can you go to it? Your B3, your third block. So I think you need to create an account and then put in my teacher code. And then you should see those assignments. And if you click on that first assignment, I want you to do four problems in each one. And it's kind of weird. So I'm going to log in and see if I can demo it. Oh, login failed. That's always fun. I wonder what I made my password. Is that the Delta Mouse thinking? It's going to ask you for transformations. So the first assignment. Is going to kind of link these similar incongruence back to transformations. So to go from here to here, I had to slide. And to get from figure O to this one, I had to rotate. So I'm rotating and it stays congruent. And then I'm translating and it stays congruent. So down here, I think what I'm going to have to do is make it smaller a little bit. Figure O onto figure P. Right, so I'm going from O down to P. So this is a rotation of 90 degrees. Wow, this is so slow. And I'm going counterclockwise, because I'm going to the left. So counterclockwise, followed by a translation. So that's a slide, just linking these together of one, two, three, four, five, six units to the right. The two figures are congruent, correct? They're all the same size, just like we looked at in IXL. This is my computer screaming that I have too many tabs open, are congruent. If they are congruent, they are rigid. They have not changed. Dilations are the only ones that are not rigid. So here, a rotation, a reflection, and a translation are going to be called rigid. We haven't looked at that vocabulary. I think I've asked you to do four of these. Okay, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? <clears throat> did I go backwards? Figure O onto figure P in the animation below. So O goes counterclockwise, rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, followed by a translation right six units. One, two, three, four, five, six, O. Oh, it should have been seven because I can't count. Okay, so be careful. You want to make sure that you count correctly. I counted six, not seven. So from negative five to positive two, that's seven. I should have gone by the numbers, not my eyeball. I'm going to work on this for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, just trying to get a hang of it. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute if I can. 
So in the vocabulary, we know that the so what from midpoints are segments. We know the so what from bisectors could be segments or angles. But here, because I'm bisecting a segment, I'm cutting this thing in half. A, B, and B, C are congruent. And then we've got reflexive sides. So reflexive sides, you have the reflexive property in algebra. In geometry, what it looks like is this side for K is adjacent to that same side for M. So those two sides are the same, right? We talked about that yesterday. So just kind of a review from the notebook. Angles, same thing. You can always mark vertical angles. Sometimes you need to label them with three letters so you know the difference between the left side of P and the right side of P. So that's the whole reason we have those three letters. And here we've got BD is the knife that cuts angle ADC in half. So this top angle and this bottom angle are congruent. All three of these angles are angle D. In order to differentiate them, you need those three letters, right? If you say Mrs. Doherty, are you talking about me? Or are you talking about my sister-in-laws? Are you talking about my mother-in-law? You got to call me out by first name in order to tell the difference. It's kind of the same thing here. It's a whole family of angles. There's three of them that all come together. So you got to be specific about which one you mean. Right angles always mark with a right angle box and always equal 90 degrees. That means as long as you have that right angle box, every single 90 degree angle is going to be the same, right? So just a review of the vocabulary. Again, this unit is where it all comes together. You gotta know all the vocabulary. You gotta know what all of it means. You gotta be able to set up all the equations and solve them all correctly. It's a lot. This is kind of where the rubber meets the road. These are the hardest ones to see. If you have overlapping triangles, so this is like this acute triangle A sitting on top of this other acute triangle C. They're like two things that are sitting right on top of each other. If that angle B in triangle A and angle B in triangle C occupy the same space, if I separated those out, those would be congruent angles, right? So angle B in this A triangle, angle B in the A triangle, and angle B in the C triangle are congruent. That's the reflexive property again. They occupy the same space. Then you've got parallel lines. Parallel lines are going to give you angles. So if you've got parallel lines, you're going to get angles from those. It's kind of backwards, right? Because lines you think maybe should give you segments, but lines actually give you angles. So if you imagine that Z from T to Q to R to S, those green angles are alternate interior. Similarly, if you do the Z the other way, Q, Y, S, R, you can make a Z. So anytime you can make a Z or an N, those interior angles are going to be congruent. Okay, it's kind of a useful little trick to look at. They can either be a bow tie like this, or it can be a diagonal across a parallelogram. So again, I've got that Z, a parallel line, a transversal, and a parallel line. The corners of the Z are going to be congruent. You guys are the best class I have ever had on finding corresponding angles. I love it. I don't know what magic happened, but angle S can slide right on over and land on angle U. That's because this segment here is parallel to this segment here. You guys see these before any other class I've ever had in my life. It's crazy. I love it. So corresponding. Those are often the hardest ones to look at. We've already done these like purple slides in the middle. So jump down to slide 11. And we're going to kind of give like a little intro into proofs. So a lot of people say proofs. Ah! Proofs is just a way of organizing all of your thought process, okay? So proofs don't have to be in the same order. You can mix them around, work them around, but you do have to be able to justify. So that's kind of what we're going to practice here. If you've kind of tuned me out, jump to angle or side slide 11, and let's talk about these. We've already looked at them a little bit. AC bisects BDC. AC is the knife that's cutting this piece of cake in half. So B, C, D. What I get from that, that so what, right, is that B, C, A, B, C, A is congruent to D, C, A, D, C, A. 
there was an angle bisector, right? I'm told that. So anything that appears over here in your given is going to appear over here in your reasons. Then if I jump over to the next thing, angle ABC, ABC is congruent to ADC, ADC, that's given to me. That's just given information. Okay, anything over here you can write because it's given. Then AC equals AC because of the reflexive property. Again, what combination of sides and angles do I have here? What is this? The blue. Is that an angle or a side? That's an angle. And what's the red? What's the red? That's another angle, right? So these guys are both angles. Angle, angle. And then this last thing, AC, the yellow thing, is a side. Just like when we name things, B, C, A, B, C, A, it all goes in order. These have to go in order too. So I'm going to say this is an angle, this is an angle, and then it gets to the side. My reason down here at the bottom for tomorrow is going to be angle, angle, side. Okay? So that was our example. Let's look at the next slide, slide 12. What can I put in the first column? That's the what did I mark. So what can I mark? based on this first piece of information. T is the midpoint. So I can say T is midpoint. And my reason for that is given. Okay, so in proofs, a lot of times you're gonna write given right here. Anything over here that's printed on the paper for you that you didn't have to guess at is given. What's my next thing? What's my so what from that? Mm -hmm. RT is congruent to what? ST. ST? Is RT congruent to ST? If I know T is the midpoint, RT is congruent to PT. Absolutely. PT. And that's the definition of the midpoint, right? If I just wrote that this is midpoint, then this is definition of midpoint. Okay, that says definition of midpoint. That's a PT. So then we go to the next thing, ST and QT, ST and QT. I can write that over here. ST is congruent to QT. Why? Because it's given. Absolutely. Those are my favorite ones. Don't make those more complicated than they need to be, right? ST is congruent to QT because it's given to me. I don't have to think about it. It's just sitting there on the page for me. What about SR and QP? SR and QP. So I'm going to mark that with three tick marks because I already have a one tick mark and a two tick mark. SR is congruent to QP. Why? Because it's given. And then what do I have marked in this triangle over here? Side, side, side. Side, side, side. That is what is marked. Yes? No? Maybe so? Easy, right? Yeah, it's easy. All right. Question number three. What do I write? What do I know? Why do I know it? I've got perpendicular for sure. We can start there. What do I know about that perpendicular? I can do YK is perpendicular to UK and TN is perpendicular to NI. What do I know? Why, why do I know that? Because it's given. I've got to figure out a better way to write here. Okay, so what's my so what from those perpendicular marks? You started to say it. What can I draw in here? because I know they're perpendicular. 90 degrees, yeah. So angle K 
and angle N are 90 degrees. Why? Definition of perpendicular. This wasn't specifically given to me. I had to know that this term means 90 degrees, right? So definition of perpendicular. Boom. Okay, we're on a roll. What now? What about these guys? Can I write those in? So YK and TN, YK and TN. YK is congruent to TN, and YU is congruent to TI. Why can I do both of those? YU, it's given, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then my last answer down here is going to be my combinations of sides and angles. So what kind of combinations do I have here? Side. I got to go in order. So side, side, angle, right? And if I read that backwards, that's angle, side, side. Can we do that in math? We cannot. However, what I did not mention yesterday is this is a name brand triangle. This is like the Gucci of all triangles, okay? The Air Jordans, if you will. If I've got a right angle here, what can I call this other than just a random side? Not a hippopotamus, but a across from the right angle. So the side opposite that right angle is called a hypotenuse. Yes, it is. It is called a hypotenuse, not a hippopotamus. Hypotenuse. And if the hypotenuse is the longest side, then the other two things are not arms, but they are legs. Ay, ay, ay. The jokes are real today in geometry class, folks. So instead of the ASS triangle, which is a no-go in math class, we can call this the hypotenuse leg triangle. Hypotenuse leg. Okay, that is the only, because it is a name brand Gucci triangle, that is the only angle side side triangle that works. Okay, hypotenuse leg. You're going to remember that forevermore, right? Not a hippopotamus and an arm triangle, but a hypotenuse and a leg triangle. Not an ASS triangle, because that's not an appropriate thing to say in math class. Jokes are all over the place. Jokes are all over the place. All right, help me out. What do I do here? Last two. So I can do FJ is congruent to HJY, given... And then what? G is midpoint. That's also given. We usually start with all of those given things. What's my so what here? If G is the midpoint of FH, what's my so what? It is bisecting. What do I get? How do I write a bisected thing in geometry language? What equals what? F, the angles F and H. If G is the midpoint, I'm talking about a segment. So if G is the middle of the segment, what is the right and the left side of the segment? F, G, and H, G. F, G, and H, G. It's those so what's that are hard, right? So if G is the midpoint of this segment, it comes in the middle of the segment, FG equals HG. This is definition of midpoint, right? Definition of midpoint. It looks like a not even a kindergarten wrote that. What else can I write? What's invisible here? One more thing, like looking in a mirror. FJ. Do I know anything about FJ? Oh, I didn't mark that, did I? FJ and HJ. Yep, you're right. I didn't mark that. Got to mark that. What's the last thing? One more piece of information I can mark. What can I mark? 
it's so tempting to say it's 90 degrees because it looks like it's 90 degrees and it would probably measure 90 degrees, but we don't know it's 90 degrees. What do we know? We know the midpoint, we know G. And because we know G, we know FG and GH. What else do we know? Because those two triangles are adjacent. GJ. GJ in the F triangle is exactly the same as GJ in the H triangle. Guys, if you go into construction and you want to build something or you go build your own house someday, you want all of those walls to be exactly the same height. If GJ on the left side doesn't equal GJ on the right side, you are going to be in trouble. Right? And that reason is the reflexive side. Okay? So if I've got a side down here and a side over here and a side in the middle, what do I write down here as my justification? Side, side, side. All day long, that works. All day long, every day. Last one. Last one, last one, last one. All right, angle BHL. Angle BHL is congruent to angle AHL. Why? It is given my favorites. Okay, then we got to mark it. BHL, BHL, that's the left side. And AHL, AHL, that's the right side. Got it marked. And that is an angle, right? So now LH bisects, LH bisects, angle BLA. That is also given. What's the so what? LH is the knife that cuts BLA in half. So what's the what's the so what for my angle? What do I know because I know bisect? What angles are congruent because LH bisects BLA? BLH. BLH is congruent to ALH. ALH. And then I heard lots of people say the reflexive side. We could have put that up here too. What do I know about the reflexive side? There's no in there. What's the reflexive side? H? L? B? A? What's the reflexive side? Where did they come together? Where are they adjacent? LH. LH is congruent to LH. Okay. Awesome. No question mark, Dalton. That's 100% the right answer. LH with confidence. So now that I've labeled my angles over here at H and I've labeled my, labeled my angles over here at L and I've labeled the side that connects them, what combination of angles and sides do I have? Angle, side, angle, you are 100% correct. Angle, side, angle. Remember that just like when we name angles, they have to go in order, B, L, H, and A, L, H. When you look, put those angles and sides together, they also have to go in order. They have to be connected. So angle L is connected to angle H by side L, H. So angle, side, angle. The getting that letters in order is sometimes the hardest part. Guys, that's all I have for you today. What I need you to do is make sure that you get the homework done. Work on the IXLs and or the Delta Math, but please make sure you get that homework done. There are some very hard problems in it. It's going to cause you to think. Okay, I want to have good conversation tomorrow because everybody's tried them. If you have not done the test review or the test, please, 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 please make sure you get those retakes done. Okay. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're almost to spring break. One and a half more days. We're there.